And now we're ready to start a new unit of our dress. Due to the flexibility of the unit construction method of sewing, you could pick up and work on any unit you wished. But to keep from handling the units any more than is necessary, it would be well for us to use a unit or make a unit that will join to the blouse front since that's the one with which we started. So with this demonstration, we'll make the blouse back. While the pattern's still on, we'll want to mark where the center back is. And as you remember, that was laid on the fold of your fabric. Now here's a little trick so that you can see where the center back is after the pattern's been removed. Just snip off the corner here at the lower edge and up here at the neckline. Make your snip deep enough, they'll make a notch but not so deep that it'll weaken the seam. We'll unpin the pattern from the fabric. And then these nicks will establish our center back. And the first thing we'll do is stay stitch. My shoulder line will be stay stitched from the high point down with the grain line. Establish your guide according to the seam allowance on your pattern and then bring the edge of your fabric up near the guide but not quite touching it. You'll remember that stay stitching is a row of stitching to make the threads of the fabric stay in place while we're constructing the garment. Stay stitching is made with matching thread and regular length stitch. Keep the edges of your fabric clean by clipping off these long ends of thread. We'll stay stitch the neckline from the high point to the center. And the same on this other side from the high point down to the center. So that each side will be stay stitched with the grain. I'll point up a second use for this stay stitching at the neckline when I put on the collar. And we'll go down to the lower part of the blouse our pattern tells us to put in the gathering. And the gathering stitch is similar to the ease stitch, except it's just a little bit longer. In order for you to see how that will be in use, I'm going to put it on this small blouse. And the first row of stitching is on the seam line, so push your fabric right up next to your guide and lower your needle. And the second row of stitching will go in about a fourth of an inch below the seam line. And even though we're not going to be gathering this up until we join the blouse to the skirt, some of you may be curious to see how these work. You see we have two rows of stitching and four threads. 
So we'll take all these two lower threads that came from the bobbin, hold on to them tightly, and lift or slip the fabric over the threads. And you can see how easily the fabric slips over them, even though the stitches were not very long. And now to put the gathering into a blouse. The first row right on the seam line. Then we'll put the second row a quarter of an inch down. This will finish all the flat work on our blouse back. Then we're ready to start shaping it by making the darts at the neckline. My pattern tells me that this is the full line for the dart. But since it doesn't tell me how big to make the dart, let's go back to your direction sheet. It says to stitch 1 8 inch from the full line at the neck edge tapering to nothing at the lower edge. And stitch the dart with regular length stitch. Now I like to start at the point in order to have a smooth dart. So we'll put our needle down on these, this crosswise mark. And I think you can now see the advantage of marking across the point of your dart so that you can have both darts exactly the same length. Leave your needle down and put a, or slip a piece of paper under there for a guide and measure the eighth inch. You notice we backstitch to tack the end of that row of stitching. Now we're ready to tie the ends of these threads. And after this, we're ready to press. Shape the ends of the darts over the curve of the tailor's ham. And then press vertical darts toward the center. Press from the wrong side and then from the right. And this will complete this back unit. My dress doesn't require a zipper, but some of you may have patterns that ask for zippers down the back. So let's take time for me to show you how to put a zipper in at this time. Of course, a zipper could be put into a back with a seam or into a back that has no seam. I've chosen the one with the seam because the zipper will be covered and will look neater. To save confusion, I've selected a different fabric and have completed some of the preliminary steps. I stitched my seam up to the indication mark on my pattern and tacked it by back stitching. Then leaving the needle down, lengthen the stitch to a basting stitch and baste it right on up the rest of the seam. Then press the seam open. Now to get my machine ready, I'll have to change to the zipper or cording foot. In order for you to see each step more clearly, I'm using white thread and a contrasting colored zipper. But of course, you will want to use matching thread and zipper. 
Be sure you have the link zipper your pattern asks for. Then open your zipper and put the right side of your zipper down on your seam. Let the teeth of the zipper follow the seam or the stitching line and the end or the stop be right down here where the basting started. Then we'll stitch this on one side, just to anchor it. And close the zipper and flatten out the garment and stitch from the wrong side. Leave the needle down and turn a square corner. And stitch right on across the end of the zipper, making the same number of stitches on each side of your seam line. Then reach in here and clip the basting stitches. And if you've used a long basting stitch, you'll find it easy to spread these apart and clip them. Now we've said many times to finish all you can on one unit before you go on to the next. And that would include putting in the zipper when it's called for in the back of your blouse. 